Hi, welcome everybody. This is another episode of the Drop Poster Podcast, and we are here today with a very reclusive man who uh, would describe himself as uh, he's not talking to anybody, but he's very friendly. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Paul Phillips, everybody, better known as True Spill Milk Designs. Paul, how are you doing, man? You good? I'm yeah, yeah. I'm great. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> of course, it's been a pleasure. I mean, you've been uh, turning out a lot of uh, art from the music world, but you dabble in more and more in the poster world. So there's some really great stuff coming out and already came out. Uh, you've been part of the poster of the year tournament. You came very far last year. I think uh, was the semis or the at least quarterfinals, right? Yeah, I think it was the semis. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was. Yeah, it was all a bit of a blur, to be honest, mate. Like it was, <laughs> a, it was the first um, proper movie post right done, um, and it got lots of nice attention. And I wasn't expecting that. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was very validating. Awesome. That sounds good. And um, congratulations on on that achievement as well. And uh, I mean, you've turned out some other posters. We will talk about in a little while. And uh, they they are also really great. So uh, I think there's uh, there's something coming up uh, for um, for the post of the year tournament that will definitely be turned in. So don't worry on that front. <laughs> cool. But uh, before we start uh, with the speed round, uh, I know you've you've seen the interviews. We we'll do a little speed round at the beginning. But before we start with that, I wanted to know where does the name come from? True spilled milk designs. <laughs> <clears throat> um, it's. I mean, it's no, there's no real amazing backstory behind it. I basically just needed a name to do my artwork under. Um, I quite liked it when I saw artists going under pseudonyms. Um, and my name, Paul Phillips, super boring. So, you know, I, I had to come up with something. And I was, I was a bit of a... I was a bit of a crybaby when I was, when I was a child. I get quite upset. Um, and I'm quite, I, I, even as an adult, I'm, I'm quite an emotional person, you know. Um, and I just thought, yeah, you know, the, the phrase of not crying over spilt milk mm -hmm. um, just popped in my head randomly. And I just, I just felt there was a, a link between who I am as a person and it's um, also kind of, it, it had a sound that I felt would stick in people's heads a little bit more than just mm. the person's name, um, you know. And so, so it's 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 partially a reflection of myself, partially um, just a, a way to try to be memorable in some way, you know. Mm. What what I want you to do is uh, next, you should do portraits of uh, movie characters on the missing uh, milk bottle thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like the milk cartons. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good idea. That's a really good idea. <laughs> so good. In fact, I feel like someone's probably already done it, but I'm good. <laughs> I'm gonna look into that for sure. <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect. All right, uh, let's start with a speed round then. And uh, I'm excited uh, what you have to say to uh, these couple of things. But f okay, one more thing before we start. Mm -hmm. I went to your uh, 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 to your Instagram bio and like read through it, like the short one. You put in all these names, and I was like, yeah, Brian Wilson, I know PGs, uh, 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 and so on and so on, and other things as well. But then I was like, at some point. There was like, uh, what was it? A villager. I thought, okay, Brighton, is that a village? Would he call himself? Because I, <laughs> I didn't know stuff. And there's some <laughs> more stuff I didn't know or I or didn't recognize <laughs> right away. And uh, then I was like, oh, massive. Oh, he must have a dog. And then uh, last one, the last one in there is palm reader. And I was like, oh, does he do palm reading? I'm going to do this joke. I'm going to put my palm up and he's going to read it. But well, I found out <laughs> later that this is not going to happen. And I don't want to look like a dumbass doing that. <laughs> but it was really funny so i had i had a good laugh about myself this morning so <laughs> <laughs> really nice okay um speed run uh you ready yeah yeah okay then we're gonna start off with uh, the easy one what's your favorite color yellow all right what's uh quick question here have i mm. ever seen some something actually yellowish in your in your artwork it's <laughs> very dark <laughs> Ma is very dark, and I I'm a massive fan of neon pink as well. Yeah, uh, I try to work neon pink into a, a lot of my stuff. But honestly, like I don't use straight yellow very often, but I'll use yellow as a gradient to make mm -hmm. reds orange for oh, sunset okay, okay. stuff. 
yellow. I find yellow a really useful colour. And it's also, I don't know, it's just a colour that I get an emotional response from when I look at it. I just really dig yellow. Awesome. <laughs> I'm also a big fan of yellow T-shirts, but they don't really suit me. So yeah. Hey, I, I know that feeling. There's some, some T-shirts <laughs> I really like, but hey, I got also the very British tan, so <laughs> can't uh, yeah. do shit about it. <laughs> So um, what would your other job be if you wouldn't be an artist? Um, well, Milkman. Sorry? Milkman. Milkman. <laughs> Who's Phil Milkman? Um, no, I just, I, I honestly don't know because this was kind of my last, my last ditch effort um, career-wise. You know, I've spent the majority of my life being a musician. I've worked countless horrible, meaningless day jobs, Um And so if I wasn't an artist, I'd probably just be unemployed, to be honest. <laughs> hey, keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what is your favorite tale mythology? Tale mythology? Um, ooh, oh, that's a, that's a hard one. That's, to, a that's a hard one to answer quickly. But I'm a big, I, I really like all those old school um, Ray Harryhausen stop motion pictures. Um, oh, So I'm so, a big fan of like um, all the Greek mythology. Um, yeah, same here. Clash of the Titans, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I have to say when I played um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, it's my favorite Assassin's Creed part, by the way. That was like so much fun because of the mythology stuff that it was like interwoven in there and like all that. Really good stuff. Nice, nice. Okay. Um, what is your favorite form of media in terms of like VHS, cassettes, Blu-rays? vinyl do you mean like physically to hold or consuming what's on that media or both? Mm, let's do both okay uh so media in general i would say movies like blu-rays um i'm a big cinephile and i obsessively buy blu-rays um so I've got a library downstairs of all my films that are just huge inspiration for me. I love, I love just having physical media and not streaming. I like going mm. and looking at the spines of everything, seeing all the different types of typography. To me, that's just, um, just really enjoyable. Um, and as far as, um, physical media holding is, it's gotta be vinyl. Mm. Um, just because, <clears throat> With each one, there's um, there's a, there's not just the art on the front cover and the back. There's art insides. There's there's beautiful design elements going on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got all this amazing stuff happening before you've even listened to the music. Um, and then you've got you know you've got behind it all you've got the history and the hard work that's gone into it from the bands, the producers, mm -hmm. you know, the the people that work at the label and the, and the PR people. There's just a lot of work. Goes into vinyl, um, and I really respect that. And I just think the end product is just beautiful. One of the reasons I wanted to get into doing cover art for vinyl myself. Mm, all right, all right, cool. Um, what is your favorite uh, or your, your your spot where you go to when you want to take a time out or time off? Uh, I'm lucky. I live about three minutes walk from the beach, so I'll just uh. I'll just go and look at the sea for a bit if it's not horrendously cold. Um, I'm quite I'm quite lucky where I am in in Brighton because there's there's lots of places to go and do things and if you need to take time out. But to be honest, it's rare I have time to be able to do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, spend most of my time working these days. I see. I see. Okay. Um, what song is on heavy rotation right now, or what album? Uh, there's um a band on a label called Human Worth. Um. And the band, sorry, the label's called Human Worth. Um, they're mm. a Brighton-based mm. label, and they've they've got a band called Cower signed to them. And I got their album for my birthday. Um, oh yeah! By the way, happy belated birthday! Paul's birthday Thank was uh, on Thank on Monday, I think. Right, Monday was right. Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, we're recording on a Thursday here, so uh, the podcast coming out next week, so you can uh, wish him happy belated birthday. <laughs> Thanks. Um, but yeah, the band is called Kawa and they have an album called Celestial Devastation. And it's just, it's, it's fantastic. I've just been renting that over and over again. Awesome. That's good to hear. So uh, people will uh, gonna look that up for sure. Um, then uh, let's talk about cinema. What's your favorite seat in the cinema? 
Um, I really like, we've got, we've got a cinema that has couches. So I really like sitting on a couch at the back mm. um, because I'm a frequent toilet user. <laughs> I need okay. to, I, I need, I need access to the gangway. Um, but yeah, yeah. At, at, at the back, as central as I can get without being close to too many people mm. um, on a couch with my wife. How is it? Is it uh, sleeping wise? Are, are you going to fall asleep in that? Because like I, I have the feeling. I, for example, I have to say Dune, hard, Dune two, hard, and one as well. Hard movie to watch. Do not fall asleep. To be honest, yeah. <laughs> and on couches it would be harder. I'd say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I haven't, I haven't had a chance to see Dune two yet. Um, I enjoyed the first one, but. Yeah, I, I don't fall asleep in a cinema as a rule. My, my, my wife and I, we tend to go sort of in the middle of the day. Yeah, that's true. That helps. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't like, I, I really hate the feeling of going into the cinema when it's daylight and coming out when it's nighttime. Like, I don't, that, that, that screws with my emotions. So I, <laughs> I tend to just um, go as early in the day as possible so that we can yeah. then go home and watch more movies and relax in the evenings you know hey yeah my my man my man yeah. <laughs> it's like this is this this is how i feel about it because like i i love to go like uh, with the press screenings i like most of the time mm. they're 10 a.m the press screenings so that's that's my favorite time actually to go to watch a movie 10 or 10 10 to 11 or something like in between there that's the best time you come out the whole day still ahead of you you watch probably a good movie and then the day can only get better <laughs> Yeah, it's perfect. It's great. It's a great setup to a great day. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So, last question: What's your favorite cinema snack, or are you not snacking at all? Um, I would say, traditionally speaking, if I'm thinking back to my childhood, then I, I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, cinema hot dog. Um, <laughs> but these days, they tend to be stale and nasty. Um, mm. Most of my experience is a cinema <laughs> hot dog. So I tend to go with a mixed sweet and salt popcorn. Um, and then uh, I tend to sneak in a beer or two. So. <laughs> hey, nobody heard that. <laughs> But yeah, this, this, this is interesting. I mean, I because um, here in Germany, we only get nachos with the sauce and we get the popcorn, obviously, in the varieties. And then obviously, like the, the, sweet, the sweets, you know, like, like candy and stuff like that. But uh, we don't get really like, like a, let's say call it greasy food. We we don't have that here um, in most of the cinemas, at least in the, in the bigger chain cinemas. But uh, I've been to India last year, and uh, I've I've seen what they have like samosas. They have some pakoras. They have like all the <laughs> greasy Indian street food that you can buy there, and it's like really great. And uh, since I'm doing with a fr with friends, we do this uh, Indian movie series, so we show at least one Indian movie every week, and. Um, And we have like the this this uh, cooperating restaurant uh, uh, with us, Swadesh, and they they uh, are uh, so nice for the big premieres. They give us snack boxes for free, so we can give that to the people. So they have actually a home feeling, and this is this is what we take in then. And we have samosas and pakoras and all that stuff. So that's really nice. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah. So if you're in Berlin, ever come through, I'll I'll uh, hook you up. Yeah, 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 <laughs> totally. Alrighty, so um, let's talk a little bit more about you in detail because uh, you said you have a music background, but uh, <laughs> how how did this job pan out? <laughs> um, what? How did I end up doing this? Do you mean? Yeah, yeah how... maybe we start with the music and then we're gonna see what happened. <laughs> okay. Um, so I did start off illustration wise because um, when I was young, I used to draw a lot. Um. But then when I went to school, um, it kind of dropped by the wayside, the whole drawing thing. And, <clears throat> you know, you make friends in school, you get, start to get a little bit social. And uh, some friends of mine started up a band. Hmm. But that was, that was high school or what, what school are we talking? Yeah, the equivalent of high school. Okay. Um, hmm. Middle school, I think we call it over here. Um, so, so I was about 14 years old um, hmm. and some buddies of mine were starting a band asked me to play bass. I didn't know how to play bass. So I taught my mum into buying me a bass guitar and started to learn to play bass, played in bands all through school, um, just kind of like really bad bands, you know, like not mm. very good at all. Um, but we were all just learning and having fun with it. And then by the time I was, I'd left school and I was just sort of, I'd done a, I'd done a 
college course in music mm-hmm. just sort of because I didn't want to get a job yet. I kind of wanted to faff around a bit more. Yeah. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> I really sort of started to fall in love with being in bands while, while being at college. So then when I left college and started having my first horrible jobs, I was like, right, no, I, I need to. What was that? Um, just an office job, like a few, a few shop jobs that didn't pay very well, mm. you know, customer facing stuff okay. where you just get talked to like you're a piece of crap all day. Um, realized that maybe that wasn't the route for me. So decided to push hard with the music, got a band together by, well, by the time I was about 26, got, mm. um, might manage to find four other people where we all work together pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, By the way, for the people, I'm just uh, <laughs> so you know as well. I'm I'm showing some some of the some of the pictures you sent me with the the band stuff and uh, um, the band was the first band. Was it Meet Me in St. Louis or was it later? Yeah, the, um, <clears throat> first first proper band was Meet Me in St. Louis. I was in a band prior to that called Scanner, mm-hmm. and we did a couple of small tours, but. Um, I know my heart was never in that band. It was someone else's band and it was, wasn't really my cup of tea, but mm. Mimi St. Louis is the first proper band. Um, and we toured, we toured around a lot, got ourselves, a uh, a, a nice fan base and then, um, <clears throat> recorded how, an EP. How did this record? happen? Like, uh, did uh, you didn't meet them like, like in, 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 did you grow up in Brighton by the way, or? No, no, I grew up in Guildford. Okay. <clears throat> um, And these guys were just like, like all we were all in local bands, mm, you know. Okay, okay. We all got to know each other through the scene, and then we all realized that we were sort of the the people in the bands that we were in, uh, sort of the best musicians in the bands that we were in. So we were like, oh, okay, let's okay. let's all leave the bands we're in, and we'll 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 start up a band together. It's an all star band. <clears throat> <laughs> a very meager all-star band yeah <laughs> um but um we all got on really well in it and i had some great experiences in that band you mm. know it was the first first band i was in that got signed to a label and first oh, time nice. we released a proper record and stuff and yeah just to just tick some bucket list stuff off during mm. that time you know? and what happened to the bass guitar because i see only drummer pictures here <laughs> oh yeah 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 um well i uh, After uh, after being in several bands playing bass and stuff, um, and when I went to when I actually yeah when I went to college, they um, there were so many guitarists in the <laughs> course that they were like, because we had to do live performance and we had to form bands mm. as part of the the, the course, um, and our teacher was just like, look, there's like a hundred guitarists and like two drummers. Someone's going to have to learn to play drums. So I could already already play a little bit from just sort of mucking about. So mm. I was, so I said, you know what? Like I'll 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 drop the guitar and I'll I'll pick up drums. And so I learned how to play drums over that course. Drummers are cooler anyway. So <clears throat> totally, I knew that. You know, so that's what that's what I did. No brainer, no brainer, <laughs> no brainer. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that was and and I really fell in love with drums. It was real. It really felt like an extension of of myself when I was playing, um, which was much better, um, which was a much better feeling than when I was playing guitar. So mm. it, it was a good it was a good fit, and apparently I was pretty good at it. And we used to get some nice compliments and stuff. Um, got in a couple of drummer magazines, and then um, the band sort of folded. Because we were just pushing it too hard, you know. Like we were doing, like at one point we were doing over 300 shows a year. Oh wow! Uh, um, yeah, and and when you're working, when you're trying to work a day job, um, and you're and you're sort of doing that, it just it gets it gets a bit mental, really. Was that was that worldwide or was it Britain or um, UK? We did we toured around the UK a lot. Yeah, um, just went up and down the country, just trying to build a fan base. Our first ever tour actually was in Eastern Europe. We played like um, Czechoslovakia, Poland, mm. uh, you know, sort of all around that side. Did did I first? Uh, I first uh, forgot to ask the question. Um, what 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 music is it, by the way? Oh, it's it's it was like um, <clears throat> very niche. <laughs> it's like a post post hardcore, um, but we were essentially like a math band. So mm-hmm. I don't know whether you're 
viewers know what math is or not. Whenever I say math, the only reason I say that is because whenever I tell people I was in a math band, they, they don't know what, what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I, I don't know. So tell me. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, I just know. I know a lot of the hip-hop, R&B, funk and jazz genre. That, that's why I know my stuff. But <laughs> that, that part, I don't. Oh, it was, um, it was, uh, how can I put it? It's, it's really, it's a really hard genre of music to, to explain. It's, it's, it's rock, indie rock, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's, um, takes elements from, it takes elements from jazz and hardcore, oh, okay. and hardcore. Um, and it's quite, it's very frenetic. That's, there's a lot of. Um, complicated um, time signature changes and stuff. It's mm. quite. It's a mu it's a musician's kind of music, you know. Musos ah, will sit okay, okay. bit and they'll pick it apart. Yeah. Is that um, like? Is, is there maybe or are there maybe two bands or something that you can like say if these these guys had a baby, that's our band or our style? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's really impossible to pigeonhole. Okay, 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 okay. That was kind of the point of the, the whole band in the first place. We were I like, see. let's let's make let's make music that has zero boundaries and zero rules. Mm, okay, um, okay. <laughs> so yeah, we 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 tried to make it as difficult. We we were very pretentious at that age. Well, I was, and I was just I just wanted to make something really really challenging and something that would blow people's minds. So um, that's kind of. Sounds yeah. good. It's, it's 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 best for people to just listen to it. You know, yeah, I just wanted to say I I will give it a listen for sure. Yeah, you can you know it's on Spotify and all the usual all channels and whatnot. Indeed, indeed. So, and uh, how did you go from there after I th you said uh, things split up? Uh, <laughs> how did you come to the to the to poster and or making art in this kind of sense? Um, so we played this we played this show. It was like a, towards the end of a tour. And our van got broken into, um, and everything got stolen out the back of the van. Um, like every item of clothing I owned, <laughs> apart from the clothes I was actually wearing, mm. um, and guitars and laptops and whatnot. Um, and anyway, we exasperated with it. You know, didn't didn't want to drive miles anymore to play for people that didn't care and have all my mm. stuff stolen. I was pretty disillusioned at that point. Yeah, this reminds um, me of my DJ friends when like vinyl got stolen and stuff. Uh, oh, mate, like this, you know, when you when you go out in public to to try and entertain people and something like that happens, it's it's really hard to come back from that. I understand. Do it, you know. Um, and I I was also by that point I was like in my mid like yeah sort of in my thirties, and I was just getting a little bit. Um, sort of tired of sleeping on floors and mm. never have money, never seeing my family and stuff. So I, 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 I quit the bands and I literally had nothing else going for me. And I was like, really like, I don't know what I'm going to do now. This is, um, you know, I'm 30 years old. I've got no prospects, no real qualifications. Um, and then my partner at the time suggested I, um, sign up to university and then a recession hit and mm. I thought to myself right okay I'm not going to be able to find a job I'm going to be moneyless if I go to university I can get a student loan and a grant and I can ride out this recession mm. and get a qualification at the same time um, so, that, so that's what I did um, I did a I did a couldn't get into university because I didn't have any qualifications so I did like a foundation course for a year and then managed to get a place on a university graphic design course. And then I did that. And halfway through uni, I uh, probably less than halfway through, about probably a few months into it, I thought to myself, okay, well, I, I've got this music background and I've got quite a few contacts. Um, so a good route for me to go would be to try to f forge myself a, a, a little business making art for bands and stuff i'd mm. already been people like dan mumford's work because he'd worked with um bands like gallo yeah. um and he came to our uni and gave a little talk and i had a chat with him oh okay and he was really nice and uh, encouraging and then uh, uh yeah i just just put my head down and just spent i'm very much like if I'm interested in something, 
I get really obsessed with it and that's pretty much all I do. Yeah, I can um, understand it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, it was just a case of that. You know, uni was just three years of me just obsessively trying to hone my craft and get it to a point that when I left uni, I could feasibly do graphic design as a job. Yeah, that's um, very nice. So, so yeah, that's that's how the transition happened. I see. That's uh, that's really great. So, um, and uh, like, how would you say, um, your work as a as an illustrator is is going? Are you are you satisfied with the like the way that you took this path? I think that's more my question. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think I learned with the with doing bands for so many years that things don't come quickly or easily um no matter how good you are at something there's still a huge element of um pushing yourself and dragging yourself kicking and screaming into the forefront so that people can actually see your work you know i i, I you meet a lot of illustrators and creative people in your journey because mm. you're on creative courses and in creative environments and there's just so many people that um that are great at what they do but nobody ever sees their work because they're they either too modest or they're um not confident enough to show that work and i, I always just think it's a real shame so i sort of uh, vowed to myself to to never um never undervalue what i was doing and to push myself and to promote myself in a way mm. that i felt was accurate like not embellishing not not relying on false modesty but that would actually um just oh, I, can't, i can't think of the word but <laughs> it, 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 I, i just i just don't see the point in not promoting yourself okay you know? you've, you've got you've got to if you want to get where you, you of course of course yeah. So, um so yeah i can't yeah. remember question was now <laughs> <laughs> all good it's all good uh, no, i'm still just i'm still waking up i normally work till like three in the morning so ah so okay i'm sorry that i woke you up so early there for no, this. <laughs> no no it's absolutely fine I, i i said yeah no worries let's do it at that time not not really thinking but um but it's fine it's fine <laughs> all righty but yeah so uh you've turned out uh some some uh a, a great posters we talk uh, in a second about but uh before we go into that i mean you said you're a cinephile as well um so what is some some movie or some good movies or tv and you have seen lately anything you want to shout out that uh is a must see some recommendation um i watched the iron claw the other day um mm -hmm. which i thought was fantastic um yeah. Really, really weird seeing Zac Efron um, looking so different because I think he's had some jaw surgery or something. Yeah, yeah, he had a crazy accident and had this jaw surgery. It's like I saw him in um, in in, in Ricky Stenicky. Oh yeah, yeah. He looks a little bit different there, but like I think Iron Claw must have been right after, right? So like right after <laughs> um, the the accident or something like that. But like that's yeah. crazy. He looks he looks so different. This is sick. Yeah, it's, it's very white like his jaw now. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I don't think like his haircut in it, like yeah, 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 accentuated that. I think, um, but it was a fantastic film and really, really, really emotional. Um, but pretty much like, anything A twenty four churn out, I'll um, I'll gobble mm. up. Um, but also poor things, and it's kind of an obvious one, you know. But um, I, I I loved it. Thought mm. it was great. Big fan of Yorgos Lanthimos. Um, and American Fiction was another great. Yeah, film. I liked it as well. Really liked that. TV wise, Masters of the Air. Um, really enjoyed that. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, that's I'm gonna, I can think of at the moment, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna watch the name, the 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 last episode of season two of Tokyo Vice because that's I love that show. It's really good. I can recommend Tokyo it. Vice. I, I'll, I'll make a note of that. I've never seen that. Yeah, but uh, it's an HBO show. It's with Ensign Ensign Orgold or whatever his name is. I I, I cannot pronounce it. But you know, I think you know the the face when you see it, and uh, Ken Watanabe is in it as well. So and uh, okay. so, and it's like it's it's a true story. It's about uh, Jake Edelstein, who was like a reporter for, in Tokyo, uh, for a crime reporter, and uh, yeah, it tells this kind of story about the uh, the yakuza, like it has some yakuza points in it, and how it goes like worldwide, even in America. It's like it's crazy, great stuff. Cool. Yeah, sounds awesome. I'll, I'll check that out. 
Yes. And uh, yeah, are there any posters that you've enjoyed lately? Like uh, like artwork you've seen? Oh man, that's 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 what's up. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> um, Except I, your own, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, but I'm always, I, I, I'm, I'm sure this is standard for most artists, but I'm always, I'm always my own worst critic. Every, everything I do, I, I, I tear apart mentally. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, I always know what I'm going for roughly, but I'm never sure what it's going to look like until it's finished. And sometimes I don't always feel 100% comfortable mm. with the end result. Um, um, but that's, that's the curse of, being of course, of course, creative, I think. But I, as far as stuff, pe other people are, are releasing, I, for my birthday, I got a really beautiful print by Ken Taylor. Um, oh, which was that? It was the green sky, blue grass print. It's got a, it's got a foil. It's a foil variant. Green. What was it? Green grass. Green sky, blue grass. I'm, I'm Google it. I'm Googling it for the people so we can. Yeah. Google it. And you can you can talk about it. It's it's the one with the mountain, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just that I, I see a lot of artists use them um, foil variants. I've never I've never had the the opportunity yet, but um, some some of them don't for me don't personally don't work. If there's a lot of foil coming through in the design, it can look quite confusing to me. Mm. To the art. But this this particular print by Ken Taylor, I I think it works so well because the foil is restricted to um, just the sort of the the fire yeah. coming out of the sort of planet this, or yeah or thingy yeah. yeah and and like the rest of the the rest of the print doesn't really have any foil on it and it just when you're actually stood there with the print I'm looking at it now that's why I'm looking over it mm. um, <laughs> it, it it just yeah it just I, I don't. I don't want to use the term pops, because <laughs> that's but it pops. the worst term, but, <laughs> but it pops. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, it's just a beautiful print. Um, yeah, um, and also uh, anything by, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, um, Laurent Durieux? Laurent Durieux, yeah. Um, anything by him, I'm just fascinated with his work. His why? Palettes. Can, can I ask you? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to ask why, because like, uh, like so lately it's been like hit or miss. And I, I know he has good ideas, and I think, but sometimes it's just it's not up to my taste. I think I don't know if I'm too critical on things or whatever. But this is he's also one of these one of the artists that have been like, you know, it's like household names. So whatever he puts out, people will go crazy about and buy and I, I need I need 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 need. But um <laughs> sometimes well, it's know. just like it's okay. It's okay. It's not the print of the year for sure. But uh it's like he's doing good stuff. I I'm not gonna uh, fault him for that. <laughs> no um that's fine you know like if everybody has their favorites and everybody has uh, somebody who's extremely popular who they who they don't dig their work and mm. you know it's not for them like that's just subjective just how taste it goes, in art, isn't yeah. it? Um, but i think with Laurent's work is like i really i really like the way he a he's just his line work is just pristine like mm. it's mm. it's insane it's almost I I always assumed it was Vector, and then I read somewhere. I, I might have even been in, listening to one of your interviews actually, mm. that somebody pointed mm. out that he actually doesn't use vectors. Yeah, I think it was James that said that. Um, so I, I haven't looked into it, but I'm going to have to find out how he does what he does because his work is just yeah, it just has a it has a an exactness to it, which normally mm. you would think would be quite a, give a quite quite a cold feel but i find his artwork very warm and inviting um yeah. and i also like the way he chooses very like you know a lot of artists will choose the most action-packed element from a film to focus on for their poster or the most or, or an idea that has the most references to the movie yeah, yeah, yeah. fill up the piece with that whereas laurent's just quite happy to draw like a doorway you know with a <laughs> with a, with a shadow falling just perfectly you know yeah and yeah. I just i really dig that about his work there's a minimalism to it that i can never achieve in my own work um so yeah um but also somebody who i'm obsessed with is nico delort oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, i love his stuff oh my god 
I'm just really obsessed with his work. I, I love I love the compositions. His his mm. his to me he's like the king of composition. Is this uh, was it Inception? I think it's, it's his Inception piece that is I think one of my favorites of his this... with the buildings. Yeah 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 yeah. That's that's you know the the. However, he um, sets up his illustrations. He he always ends up with a really vivid, dynamic mm. uh, image that's full of contrast. Whenever yes. I draw, I, I draw I draw all my pieces in um, monochrome before adding color. Mm. Um, and whenever I've finished it and it's monochrome, I always think, oh man, like you know, I don't know how he makes his how how he makes his art have so much contrast using just black and white. But he just mm. yeah. He, he crushes it every time for me. Yeah, uh, indeed. Yeah. I, I can understand. I can understand <clears throat> that. That I can understand a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just. Uh, I think it may uh, that the hype is for me the problem. I think. I think it's okay. overhyped at some at some points. You know, <laughs> when uh, he does, it's not like he doesn't do good work. He does good work, but he's doing he's doing it very constant. And then there's some pieces are just outstanding. And yeah. I think, but everybody is like hyping all the pieces, even ju just good ones, you know, as outstanding. And this is, I think this is why I'm like a little tripped up about the situation. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. But um, yeah, uh, spe speaking of work uh, and, and your work, uh, where do you work? Is, is, is this your work? Is this your office or like, what, what are we doing right now? What are we seeing? <laughs> this, yeah, this is it. You're looking at it. I am. Um... I I used to have a desk, <clears throat> um, and I used to sit at that desk and draw. But um, you know, years of drumming and carrying amps and drum kits around cold venues, I've got some pretty shocking lower back issues. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I found that I just couldn't put in the hours I need to put in if I'm sat at a desk. You know, mm -hmm. so I was, we bought we invested <laughs> in a very comfortable sofa. And now I just I just work from the sofa with oh, my okay. laptop to, to my side. It's probably it's probably very bad for me, but since I've been working like that, I've had almost no lower back issues. Okay, that's good. I mean, uh, that's good on your health for sure. But I, I, I just wonder how how's it working on the couch and putting in these details you do in, in your hard work. It's fine, man. You know. You know the way the way I work is I you know I just zoom in real close. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, I build I build my um, my illustrations out of photo references, like make co photo collages. Mm. Um, so then when I go in and do all the fine line work, I just zoom in really close and I just follow the contours um of the the blacks and the whites accordingly hmm. so i'm so i sort of almost draw blinds because i'm so close to what i'm doing but <laughs> i that's i don't know it's just a comfortable way for me to do it and it's a way i can achieve the look i want to achieve in my pieces so. hmm. 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 um but yeah sit, sitting on the couch and drawing i i'm just used to it now like i did it all through uni so <laughs> ah, okay there you go that's that's good it's good to hear for sure and uh, yeah, yeah, speaking of your work, and you already mentioned that you do the line work first, but uh, how, how is the whole process? Can you walk us through in, in, in your steps? What are you doing and, uh, and so on? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how detailed you want to go. Go, go <laughs> but... detailed because people are interested in detailed. Okay, okay, cool. Um, so I, I pulled up, by the way, Blade Runner, so people can see what this is. Maybe you can give us the steps on, on Blade Runner, for example. Okay, well, this is this is a controversial one actually, um, <laughs> because I this is a rookie error. Um, I the good the good folk at Hero Complex Gallery um, released it this yeah. weekend just got, and uh, a gentleman called Ray Seventy One. Yeah, good old Chris. He, Chris, I know, I, I know, he has a similar piece. Yeah, very similar. Like I, I, when when my piece came out and somebody on the comments mentioned it i was like ah, oh, okay let's let's look up this piece um i i originally when i when i do do a piece i do do a big google search mm. and you know look as hard as i can to find see if there's any similar pieces mm. um and i didn't my my original search didn't didn't throw up yeah, yeah, yeah 
Yeah, Peace. it's it's an old one. It's an old one. Uh, it's like I think ten years at least. I I, I did the same because I was like I remember this. This is, looks very similar to Raid, and then I googled it. And uh, even when you Google Raid seventy one Blade Runner, uh, you get one Pinterest hit of that one. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't I didn't see it. Um, I've since spoken to Chris about it and apologized mm-hmm. that the composition's the same. Explained a totally coincidental um because you know what it's like in the art world the music world's the same mm. if you do and it's the same as somebody else's everybody cries plagiarism and there's mm. up a big hornet's nest yeah but uh, chris was probably a true gentleman as he is right yep totally he was really nice about it i i emailed him straight away as soon as i found out um as soon as somebody brought his print to my attention and said look i'm really really sorry this is totally you know just random um and he was cool he was just like yeah no worries man you do you um and yeah we just we just sort of left it at that i thoroughly intend to buy him a beer if ever i meet him for being so laid back about it because he could have thrown a massive wobbly about it if he wanted to and he'd have been quite within his rights um but no he was cool about it and i think also like i think although the composition is very similar the style is different for sure yeah I think the style is very different. Um, and I was I was going mentally, thematically, I was going in a, to- in a totally different direction. My my focus was was the um, the detail and architecture of the Bradbury building itself, which mm. in his is that somewhat hidden. Yeah. Um, and also the focus on the, the doves uh, that re- represent the replicants, which isn't in his print at all. Mm. But... Um, but yeah, there's just it's uncanny how similar the the compositions are. Yeah, uh, first first look, you always you get that feeling, and if especially if you know the the one of Chris as, as well. But uh, that that's that's while you were talking in the beginning, I was I was googling that as well before even before that. I was like, yeah, that's that's different. I think it's different enough that it yeah. That well, it I, should I, be I fine. spoke to Hero Complex, and they 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 sort of had a similar feeling. So I was happy to move. Mm. move forwards um on their say so as i say i'm, I'm still pretty new to the scene so mm. i don't want to step on anyone's toe and of make any, anyone angry but um yeah it's you know if he's cool with it then i'm cool with it if he'd said look this is absolutely out of order then i would have um yeah. contacted hero and asked if we could take it down or something yeah. of course of course that's uh, very nice of you as well and uh, yeah but, but talk us through the piece so how, how did it all start out uh, uh why did you pick this particular scene uh, as well and uh, how did you go from there okay so when <clears throat> when i originally got given the list of films to do i wanted to do the blade runner one because just because i've been watching it a lot at the moment mm-hmm. uh, go through phases of watching films a lot and then not watching them for years but um i know i was i was looking at i did my google search on blade runner posters and i i was you know i was seeing a lot of the same things um uh a lot of the same kind of images everyone's focusing on the rain and the neon um and the uh, Terrell corporation building Mm. that kind of stuff and i just didn't want to I, I wanted to try, I always try to do the opposite to what everyone else is doing. Um, so I thought I want to, I really love the Bradbury building. I want to focus on that. Not many artists seem to be focusing on that. Um, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> just to. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, just me and him. Um, so yeah, I just, uh, I then sort of went online and I was looking for reference images and pictures of the Bradbury building. And you're kind of limited um, to some degree um, because there's a lot of copyright issues and Mm. uh, very few, I think, I think when people go into, I, to get reference pictures, I go onto websites where people have just uploaded their photos and stuff like that holiday snaps and stuff like that and you know and everyone takes pictures from the same angle in the Bradbury building I think somebody even commented under mine like uh, about it being similar to raids and they're saying something along the lines of but uh, I don't know how else you would draw the Bradbury building because that, that's <laughs> their, that iconic staircase is you know what yeah, you yeah, want yeah. To capture, essentially and you can only get that from so many angles um but anyway yeah I I 
got a bunch of reference images together, mm. smashed them together in Photoshop, play with the, um, uh, use the um, warp tool to play with the... Yeah, I just want to say it feels like a 0 0.5 uh, wide angle camera lens on it, you know, like like you take the, 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 the iPhone 0 0.5 shot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally. And I, I really like that. You know, it gives it gives yes. things a sense of scale, which is something I'm I'm always trying to really sort of get through in my in my my work. I really like playing with scale. Mm. Um so yeah, so I, I threw together this um rough composite made of photos in Photoshop. Um play about with those elements until until I sort of that's that's where the designing of the poster happens, I guess. Like because mm. I, I I get all the composite elements together in a way that I think looks nice compositionally. Then I turn it all black and white, and I play with the contrast. I bring the highlights out and make the darks darker mm. um, as much as possible. Um, and then I put that on a layer. And I bring the opacity down, and I put a dark layer underneath. And then over the top of it, that's when I start drawing and I'll focus in and I'll do all the line work in um, in white over the top of a grayscale image. Mm -hmm. And once it's once it's finished I'll, that first layer, I'll then go over that layer again and do all the cross hatching that you see. So I kind of it's like a two pass yeah. system. And then after that, I go in and do the same again, but with the highlights. I might play around with the guides in between with the contrast of the guides, bring out certain elements. Mm -hmm. um, and then once, once that's done, I then set up layers underneath to do things like gradients. Um, um, and then I try, yeah. I, the good thing about having everything on the separate layers when you're designing it in the first place is you can then go into one layer like the highlights and you can, yeah. um, you know, get the magic wand tool and highlight everything in the highlights. And then you can use the spray brush tool to get a nice gradient only over those highlights. And mm. you can, you know, you can, you can get some pretty nice effects that way. Um, and then, yeah, I just sort of, once all my layers are organized and I've got everything as it is, I then condense everything that's the same color down into the one layer. Mm. So if you're doing screen prints, then you get, you, you have to be, I, I learned this very quickly in the beginning that like, if you're not organized, you end up with like a hundred layers. And if you put even one of those layers in the wrong place, the picture just doesn't look right. So every, <laughs> everything has to be labeled and put in folders and organized when you're designing it. Otherwise it'll be, it will make the whole printing process later almost impossible, you know, unless you're good at flattening images and then re-separating the colors, which mm. with my work, because, because it's quite high in detail, that can be quite problematic doing it that way around. So I like to keep everything separate from the get-go. Right. Yeah. That's a, that's a elaborate process. How, how long does it take like for like, like doing all these details is it is it are you even like is there a point where you say okay now i'm done or are you still saying oh it, it needs to be more <laughs> no i know i've like my, my process is pretty regimented now actually mm -hmm. like um i i go from like top left to bottom right mm -hmm. with everything so i uh, you know i draw in all, all, almost a mechanical way um, I see some, I see on Instagram artists doing and they're, they're just sort of playing about and doing a, a bit of line work here and then a bit of color here. And that to me is just like <laughs> chaos. <laughs> like, I people can work like that. I would, the way I do it, it's like, I always know how far I am away from the end, more or less. Hmm. Whereas if you're just sort of doing bits and bobs, you, it's like, you never, you never really know until you're finished. Um, so yeah, I like. I guess I like I like to keep things very regimented so that I can work out where my next client's going to be yeah. in the in the run sort of thing. So the more the more you do this, the more you the more you have to hone your workflow to make things faster and more sort of uh, accurate 
I suppose. That's the thing about art and design. It's all about speed and accuracy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just speaking of speed, like how long does it take you? Like for like it's, I mean, because I know that sometimes deadlines are very, very short and like with all these details, I wonder, I wonder how, how long does like, do you do you extra time or are you just that fast? Um, no, I'm not that fast. I'm, I'm just, I'm just really happy to draw. So I don't mind putting in extra hours. Um, I, this year, I don't think up until, up until the beginning of this month, up until my birthday, hmm. I hadn't taken a day off. Um, so I've been drawing every single day since the beginning of the year. And hmm. I, I, I roughly put in 14 hours a day. Um, sometimes if there's a tight deadline or when you're working with bands and musicians, they'll yeah. quite often um, sort of create problems because they're not really thinking that I have any kind of timeline, <clears throat> mm-hmm. if, if that makes sense, you know. Um, they, they tend not to think about the implications of their actions on the designer, um, on, <laughs> yeah. on, on, on the designer's workflow. Um, that seems to not even enter into things in the in, in the bands, which is fine. That's you know, I I know mm-hmm. that's how it is, and I've worked in that industry for long enough now mm-hmm. um, that it is the way it is, but. Um, yeah, lost my way. But still, a wrench, a wrench in 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 your kind of uh, cycle. Hurts. Yeah, so you know, it only takes two bands. It only takes two bands to to sort of muck you about, and that, and you're then you've got two two months where you're not getting paid any money, and it's mm. and then you'll get you'll get somebody else asking you for something that has to be done in a short space of time, and yeah, there's a lo- there's a lot of juggling. And a lot, you got to be able to manage your time, and you got to be able to cool, be able to be cool with not having any time sometimes, you know, because it can be feast or famine. Yeah, um, very much so. Um, but this year, luckily, this year it's just been nonstop, which has been great. Mm. So, um, look, looking back at all your projects that you've done, is there anything that you say, oh, this was this was some definitely my top three projects that I've done? Like, there's something that um, comes to mind. <clears throat> normally it's the most recent thing i've done um because mm-hmm. you know you just you get to a point when you've been staring at an image for so yeah, long yeah. that you sort of you just don't feel anything anymore I, i i feel like that about a lot of my own work and i'm always i'm always looking forward so <laughs> i don't I, i don't tend to look back at work too much and um, but you know I've, i've had some standout projects like the villagers project was great because The one with the animals, right? Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, when you do record covers for small independent bands, they tend not to have huge budgets. So Mm. to work with a band that had a decent-sized budget um, and were cool with having a die-cut sleeve with four interchangeable pieces of art, um, Mm. that was great, you know, to have that level of creative freedom Um, and to work with people that were so nice and professional. it was really refreshing. Um, so them and also Mastiff have been really great. They're, um, they're a, a really heavy band from Hull and they're just the nicest guys. Um, and they just really value the artwork. Um, you know, a lot of bands, they're just, they just want you to draw something so they can stick it on the front and get it out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, where, whereas Mastiff really, you know, they give me free reign. They send me the lyrics and, and the album and, They, they really appreciate what I do and like what I do. And that's, you know, those projects are the nice ones to work out. It's, it's almost like I, 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 I enjoy work more if I've had a nice experience with the client. Understandably, to, that's always, as, you know, yeah. you, you do more. You do more because you feel appreciated. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, over what the end result might be. Like, so with Mastiff, I'm really pleased mm. with everything I've done for them. But for me, it's been a memorable job because... Yes not because of the art, but because they've been such nice clients. Awesome. That's good. Is, is there anything you want to work on in the future? Any movies or sports or go somewhere totally different? And, and, and also my question, would you work on other type of music that you're maybe not that much into? Oh, yeah. I mean, there, there isn't much music that I'm not into, to be honest. Oh, okay. I, I, I like a bit of everything. There's obviously certain genres where my, my, my artwork probably 
wouldn't work with that much. Mm. Um, like I can't, I can't see my work artwork on a dubstep release, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But, on a Berlin techno uh, <laughs> album, yeah, exactly. But I mean, I would never. Say I mean, never. I mean, the you neons, know. the neons would work. I exactly. mean, you just do the Bradbury building with more neon. Yeah, <laughs> that's very Berlin techno, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you draw the inside of Berghain or something like that? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I. As far as future stuff, like. I've realized since going getting into the the movie posters thing is that there's there's a lot of movies that just don't get a look in because they're not fan favorites. Mm. Um, like when I first got in touch with Hero Complex, I suggested doing a piece for um, uh, oh, what's it called? Jordan Peele? Nope. No. Nope. The film Nope by yeah. Jordan Peele. Um, so I was going through a phase of really liking. All Jordan Peele's films at the times, and just mm. just watching them, and I really wanted to do one. But they were they were like, oh, you could do that, but no one's going to buy that. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, um, I'll do something else then. But then, um, you know, if that wasn't an issue, I'd really like to do um, lots of uh, old seventies cult films like The Friends of Eddie Coyle or mm-hmm. um, or old Irwin Allen's disaster movies like The Poseidon Adventure, Tarry oh, okay. Inferno, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. I'd like mm-hmm. to really do those, those old movies. Um, but yeah, I just don't know whether there'd be much of a market for them, really. So yeah. I could also see you like in the, in the in those black exploitation movies from the seventies. I think you could mm-hmm. do some great stuff for that. <laughs> Yeah, like coffee, anything with Pam Greer, I'd be up for drawing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, uh, like, I don't know, or even Blackula, I would uh, love to see. <laughs> Fun poster for that, man. <laughs> yeah, because he's something super, super gothic, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, and uh, now, now coming to my favorite question, obviously. <laughs> and I, I know you are part of this. So uh, the book, uh, Film on Canvas, Volume 2 is coming and uh, you are uh, a part of it. Uh, and uh, yeah, then what have you chosen as your fine artist and uh, or classical artist that uh, you want to see make a movie poster in which you're going to translate into a movie? Well, I don't know if the, I haven't spoken to you about this, so I don't. I don't know if it's. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if it's cheating or not. But um, like my my style of drawing is very inspired by the old etchings of uh, Gustav Dor. Mm-hmm. So I I was hoping to do something like a, um, uh, an Exorcist's print in the style of like old etching, like Gustav Dor, something mm-hmm. like that. I just, um, I just pull up the style for Gustav Dor for the people to see. So yeah, this is yeah, yeah, Gustav Dor here, my friends. As you can see, these are, these are look really sharp. They look really interesting. Um, yeah, these, these look nice. I, I see that. I can see where you're going with this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not classically trained as an artist, you know, I've just figured mm. it all out myself. Um, so I don't know, I wouldn't even know where to begin trying to emulate another fine artist's style. There's this one, the, the Paradiso Canto 34 by Gustav Dorr. It has like all these souls swirling around. You, you could yeah. do, you could do uh, what was the movie called? Uh, the, the, was it Sunspot, Sunlight the, or Sunshine? Like oh, the, Sunshine. The what's space, that? the sci-fi one. Yeah, exactly. I think that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good shout. Hey. That's a good shout. And that is something probably uh, nobody has done yet. So, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, I'll look into that because I do love that film. Actually, if you watch the <laughs> yeah. it, one of the scariest films I've ever seen is when I watched Sunshine, but I watched it with the commentary on by oh, okay. the okay. physicists. Um, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And they oh, would they would tell you how your face actually melts and stuff or what? I mean, he he was talking about like the <laughs> some really heavy stuff about um, sort of in a long enough timeline the the sun turns into a white dwarf and oh yeah, yeah yeah I know about that too yeah, yeah. and <laughs> I was just like I was watching the film and I was like this film's way scarier with the commentary on <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's a good movie. But yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's a good uh, picking there. Uh, is there anything else? I don't know, like maybe something that is not free to style that you would like to see that uh, this artist would have done a movie poster? 
Say again, sorry. Uh, is is there is there another artist, maybe a style that you couldn't uh, uh, um, simulate, so you didn't pick that one? But is there some, like I don't know. Let's say uh, I I always like since Poor Things came up, I would love to see a blue period Picasso piece of Poor Things. Oh, okay, yeah, that's it. That's 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 an interesting shout. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. an interesting shout. Um, so. Yeah. That's that's that would need research. That would I need to <laughs> seriously look into that question. Okay, okay, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna put yeah, you on the spot. That. Can't answer that. I'll, if I'll, if I'll, something, I'll to... when you start working on it, if something comes to mind, uh, just post it and tag me. <laughs> Sorry, and I will. Reshare. I'll do that. I'll do that. <laughs> Perfect. All right, um, and then we're through with the interview. Um, now I want to give you the chance to uh, do some shout outs uh, for uh, yourself. Like I don't know, shout out fellow artists, friends, family. And uh, let people know where they can find you and your store. And uh, yeah, plug, plug, whatever you want. Thank you. Um, so I've got some stuff online that you can buy, like personal artwork um, that you can buy through my website, which is www.truespiltmilkdesigns.com. Um, I have a store on there. I, you can also, if you're anywhere near where I live, which is in Brighton, there's a store here called um, the Stanley Road Store. And the lovely ladies that work there sell um, artwork from all local artists um, and makers. It's a really cool store, so check it out if you're in the area. Um, and also, obviously, Hero Complex Gallery. Um, those is lovely guys um who have been very generous and helpful and nice to work with so far um so there's a couple of my prints up there uh, as well as uh, huge amounts of other cool artwork from lots of artists that i'm sort of just just getting to know and getting to know their work and just really on the fringe of the scene at the moment um, and also a shout out to an artist called Randy Ortiz, um, oh, yeah. who does who does a lot of stuff for uh, Converge and Death Swish. Is is another artist who's sort of traversing the boundaries of fine art, music, and film. Um, mm. And I think I think his work's just absolutely stunning. Yes, he he and Laurent they are both on my list too. I I really want to interview with those guys. Yeah, I mean, God, like I've I've got a long list, man, like <laughs> of, 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 of artists to give a shout out. But I just also also um, some uh, photographers, Gregory Crudson and mm -hmm. um, Ryan Shude, who do amazing photography, like really high end photography, and it's very much um, very has been a massive inspiration to me in my work, uh, mm. the way they capture scenes and images. They're like film, their photography is like, um, film stills, um, very surreal stuff. But if you haven't had a chance to check out there, oh, I will definitely do because I really love photography as well. And uh, I don't know if you, uh, you know, Liam Wong, uh, uh, he, I really love his stuff. Uh, he has like a Liam Wong Tokyo was his, one of his books and he has a new one. I think it's called Tokyo two or something like that. And he does like this very neon like it looks like this looked like actually like from the set of Blade Runner technically so this kind of yeah, stuff yeah, and it's yeah. like really really good stuff yeah that sounds like my cup of tea I'll definitely be looking that up check it out all right guys then we're out thank you so much Paul for stopping by it's been such a pleasure talking to you and uh, people please check him out very up and coming artist in the movie poster scene so uh, don't uh, don't miss out on those first pieces that you can grab uh, of his and uh, yeah keep supporting us because we love to give you all the latest greatest on the poster front and also have these wonderful interviews guys all right we're out bye guys thank you bye